Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In these next few lessons, we'll be talking about analyzing software architecture. Specifically in this lesson, Lesson 7, I'm titling this Analyzing Architecture Structural Decay, where we'll take a look at what it means to analyze architecture, what are we really trying to assess and analyze, and what structural decay really means. When we talk about analyzing software architecture, this is one of the core expectations of an architect to analyze continuously the current technology environment and continually recommend solutions for improvement. And this is called architecture vitality. And let me give you an example of why this is necessary even for existing applications. Let's say that we have a bridge that we just built between two areas of, uh, that was separated by a river. And this is the kind of traffic that bridge is experiencing. Now, now, structurally, this bridge has to hold up and support this kind of load or these kind of, quote, requests going through. But I think this is probably fine. However, as the same kind of thing with software systems, these towns tend to grow. And over the course of many years, this same bridge is now handling this kind of traffic. And if we don't analyze these current structures within our architectures, this is what's going to happen. Now, if we take a look at each of these cars, each of these cars think of as requests trying to get through your system. And as more traffic builds, as both sides of this town across this river do develop, what happens is this, that structure that's holding up that bridge falls apart. And this is exactly what we don't want to have happen to our architectures. It's that continual analysis of architecture vitality to say things change, businesses change, technology changes. Are the architectures that we have currently in place suitable for the kinds of load and requests and the kind of business we're doing? And that's exactly what I'm trying to define as is structural decay. You know, perhaps the best imagery I can give you is this pylon right here. This cement pylon is actually holding up some sort of highway bridge. And notice the seams and the cracks within this pylon. Now, due to natural settling and stuff, structurally, there will always be some cracks in a pylon. There will always be some level of risk in your architectures. But what we're going to be learning how to identify are these cracks in the pylons. In other words, these pylons are the architecture supporting your application. And the more cracks that we have starts to form this structural decay. As a matter of fact, look on that left-hand side. That is a seam that has opened up. Now, through these next couple of architecture lessons, I'm going to be talking about cracks in the pylon and seams in the pylon. And we're going to be seeing various kinds of architectural decay, structural decay, and what these seams really mean from an architecture standpoint. But before we do that, what my real goal is in this particular short lesson is to really define architecture and what we mean by structural decay. Because when we analyze an architecture, what are we actually doing? Well, we can analyze the source code, which we will in later lessons. But the point is, this is your source code right here. And it's kind of just not floating in the ether, but rather it is formed through a well-defined structure. In other words, I like to think about the architecture architecture, the thing that we're actually analyzing, maybe it's through, soft, uh, uh, through source code, but it doesn't have to be. But it's the structure holding up all that source code, just like those pylons on the bridge, combined with architecture decisions and design principles. And let's see what I mean about all three of these. That structure, what does it mean, the structure holding up and forming kind of your code? Well, it really means two things. It's the pattern of software architecture you're using, whether it be microservices, microkernel, pipeline, maybe it's, it's layered architecture, combined with the illities, those architecture characteristics that you must support. In other words, what levels of scalability, performance, availability, these sort of things. That's the structure, and that's what we're really analyzing. Are we deteriorating levels of availability, reliability, scalability, performance that we need to support irrespective of the functionality? And do we have the right kind of architecture pattern in place? 
Now that's the overall structure, but the other thing that we're analyzing that kind of forms architecture are architecture decisions and design principles. For example, in a closed layered architecture, I might specify as an architecture decision that only the business and services layer can access that persistence layer. And I do this to support the idea within a closed layer of change control at the sacrifice of performance. Similarly, I may make a design principle within microservices architecture to say, please try to leverage asynchronous messaging whenever possible when communicating between services, in other words, inner service and communication, in order to try to increase performance. And these are examples of architecture decisions and design principles that also form that architecture. So this is what we're actually analyzing. Now I'm going to show you in later lessons how to actually analyze source code and the kind of metrics that we're pulling off in order to actually analyze whether our architecture has any kind of structural decay, in other words, those cracks. But also, we don't necessarily have to look at source code. We can actually look at the architecture itself, which I'm going to show you in the next lesson, to be able to find those cracks in the pylon. So stay tuned for Software Architecture Monday, whereas the next couple of lessons, I'll be talking about the next parts of analyzing software architecture, including those macro techniques and also micro techniques. Again, my name is Mark Richards. Thank you very much for listening and stay tuned for more lessons in Software Architecture Monday.